Hello, Hey Boomer community. My name is Wendy Green and I am your host for Hey Boomer. And Hey Boomer is a show for those who have retired, who are looking at retirement, and who are wondering what is next. And so every month we cover a variety of topics and we hope to leave you inspired that this next chapter of your life is a relevant, meaningful chapter and you can make it just as special as you want. I want to first thank our sponsor, uh, Road Scholar. Road Scholar is the not-for-profit leader in travel for boomers and beyond. They offer trips to all 50 states and to over 100 countries in the world. It's a fabulous organization. I've taken a couple of trips with them. And I encourage you to go support them or at least check out what they're doing. Go to road, R-O-A-D, scholar.org slash heyboomer. So go check out Road Scholar. Today is our final installment for the month of May where we were talking about health, mental health, physical health, emotional health. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of social connections in the prime of our lives, but particularly for women in the prime of our lives. We all have different needs for social connections. Personally, I have always had like one or two very close friends and I'm grateful for the larger community of women that lift me up when I need lifting up that I can go hang out with and feel inspired, have fun with, and just feel loved. Some of us have larger groups of very close friends. Some of us are connected with not just our sisters or cousins, but also with people that we've known, that we've grown up with since we were very small. So whatever, however that works for you, you do recognize the importance of the social connections in your life. And if you don't, You're going to recognize that more as we proceed on this show. But I looked up something about a study from Stanford Center for Compassion and Altruism. And they tell us that strong social connections lead to a 50% increased chance of longevity. They strengthen our immune system. They help us recover from disease faster lower our anxiety and depression, and lead to higher self-esteem and greater empathy. Bernadette Wagner, who is our guest today, is the founder of Prime Time for Women, and she began studying the science of healthy aging. And she found that her intuition around the importance of social connections was confirmed that when women get together, they are happier, healthier, and better positioned to contribute to society. Bernadette is passionate about living life to the fullest, empowering women, and combating ageism wherever it exists through innovative research-based programs and services, including, okay, listen, including a TV show, a monthly book club, workshops, a hip-hop dance troupe for women over 50, and more, which you're going to hear about, Primetime for Women challenges negative stereotypes of aging and facilitates positive social interactions that improve health and increase happiness in the second half of life. Bernadette's advocacy for women has been well recognized in the community. She was recognized as Woman of the Year in 2012 by the Hagerstown Chapter of Business and Professional Women of Maryland and she received the Life of Leadership Award in 2018 from Women at the Table. In addition, and this is, we were talking about this before we got on, Bernadette is the mother of five wonderful adult children, and even better, she says, the yaya to five curious, adorable grandchildren. She's been married to her husband, Matt, for 42 years. She's also an avid cook, an exercise enthusiast, and she loves to read, and talk about things that she is passionate about. So we're going to have a wonderful, exciting conversation with Bernadette. But before I bring her on, I want to share my never too old stories. So my first story is about Bonnie Raitt. Bonnie Raitt is one of my favorite singers, songwriters, and slide guitar players. 
And she just released her 21st album called Just Like That at the age of 72. Bonnie Raitt grew up surrounded by music. Her father performed on Broadway and her mother was a pianist and a singer. She became involved in folk music and the blues in the 60s and recorded her first album in 1971, but it was her 10th album, Nick of Time, that really brought her notoriety, and she won three Grammy Awards for that album. In the year 2000, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and she recently received a Lifetime Achievement Award at this year's Grammys. And I'm gonna go see her in a couple of weeks. She has no desire to retire and has an extended tour planned with the new al with this new album release. And my second story is also about a woman, since we are talking about prime time for women. Um, and this is about Leslie Stahl, who was born in 1941. And you all know her as a television broadcast journalist. She has spent most of her career at CBS, where she began as a producer in 1971. She got her big break as a journalist covering the Watergate scandal. And since 1991, she has been a reporter for 60 Minutes and is now that program's longest serving on-air reporter. Prior to joining 60 Minutes, Stahl served as the CBS News White House correspondent, the first woman to hold that job from 1977 to the early 90s. From 2000 to 2004, Leslie Stahl hosted 48 Hours Investigates. And in 2014, she served as a correspondent for Years of Living Dangerously, a documentary show about climate change. And in 2016, she published Becoming Grandma, The Joys and Science of the New Grandparenting. I gotta check that out. Asked about her secret to longevity in the news business, so Leslie Stahl is 80. Stahl said, actually, the secret is I love what I do. I am enthusiastic about really every story I have done at 60 Minutes. And the reason, I think, is that unlike most news organizations, at 60 Minutes, we pick our own stories. So I hope those two stories interested you and inspired you. And with that, let's bring on Bernadette. Hello, Bernadette. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for having me. I am very excited about this conversation because every time we've talked, I've left inspired. So, <laughs> Same here. so let's get started. I first want to know, have you fill in a little bit of your background that I might not have covered in the in the intro? Uh, you know, people I will, all the time ask me how I wound up where I was. And, you know, my previous career, my my master's is in speech and language pathology. Um, but I actually left to stay home with my children for a long time. <clears throat> and then when my twins, my last two were in kindergarten, I ran for elected official of our uh, local school board. And I served in that position for eight years. Yeah. In that position, I saw in our community tons of things uh, that were assets and strengths. And I also saw a lot of the, the areas that of need, uh, weaknesses in our community. What I didn't see was um a way to connect those strengths and assets with the needs and uh you know what needed to be addressed so uh my friend uh, roxanne over and i started an organization called volunteer washington county mm -hmm. and it we had a, a very robust website it was a nonprofit, and basically uh it allowed nonprofits. we had 538 nonprofits at one time wow this their missions their statements their volunteer needs, uh, they could create a whole profile of their organization, and then people in the community could go in and create profiles, what their strengths and assets were, and it enabled people to cr uh, connect directly across, and that became um, just this incredible learning experience for me. Um, I was doing that uh, job uh, for a couple years, and I got a phone call from our local hospice group, and they asked me to come in for an interview. Um, and I said, I didn't apply for a job. And they said, we know, but we see what you're doing with Volunteer Washington County. We see the TV show that you've hosted highlighting different nonprofits. We want to talk to you about a community outreach position. So then I went and did uh, community outreach for hospice for five years. 
I did a TV show for them for three years, all the time learning it was not my background. But I do think that um, I'm open to guidance. People can give me feedback, positive and negative. I don't usually get hurt feelings and I do pay attention to what people say. And so um, as I was uh, finished, I, in my mid to late fifties, I really started looking about what healthy aging was gonna look like for me. And as the more I delved into it, the more I really came to believe that I was not going to age healthfully alone. In particular for women, um, positive social connections, decrease in risk of diabetes, depression, dementia, and even certain kinds of cancer. And social isolation carries the same risk as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So Easy. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do something about connecting so that we can all age healthfully together. I think the last thing that fits uh, my story is that I'm one of nine children. <laughs> and I had, uh, there were seven sisters born in eight years and to a dynamic mother, and then there were two brothers. But I literally knew the benefit of having all these women in my life uplift me, connect me, hold me higher. And I think I told you, Wendy, for years and years and years, uh, we haven't done it since COVID, but all my sisters and my mom, I have a picture of my mom, 80, being part of the pyramid. And it was just a goofy thing we did. But for me, it became this analogy, a visual analogy of women standing on the shoulders of those that go before them and that we do lift each other higher and we hold each other accountable. And so um, for me, I wanted to share on a broader level what I had experienced on a personal level and with the idea that we could all be stronger, healthier and happier together. And so that's how Primetime for Women was born. And, and, you know, it was one of those crazy things. The um, general manager at the TV station where I used to do my TV show for hospice called me and he said, hey, you got any programming ideas? Are you up to anything? What are you doing now? <laughs> and I said, no, but I'm working on something. I'll get back to you. That was like in July. July of what, what uh, year? Uh, July of 2018. Okay. So, so before I, the pandemic. Yeah. Or July 17th. Let's see. Yeah, because yeah, it was July of 2018. And so in February of 2019, we started a live TV show. And it was really fun because um, it's like, how do you start something new in a community? You ask people for support. And what happens, I really do think if you believe it and you you see the good in it and you're not worried about your own ego and you can give people credit, then it's amazing what happens. And um, we have a local women's club here and they had a beautiful uh, historic um, venue and they offered the space to me at no cost. Oh, uh, nice. The TV station picked up the cost to um, bring their crews there. We filmed once a month. Our local hospital sponsored us. One of our retirement communities sponsored us. So it became a way to, uh, every time we did a show, we got to thank all these people for making it possible. The program grew. Our local community college had a performing arts center. We moved to the performing arts center. Um, different people came. You know, we had some national guests. We In Little Hagerstown, Maryland, <laughs> we had a, a lot of local and statewide guests too. But it was just, um, to me, every day was like this uh, gift. And said, so, hmm, I wonder who's going to step forward today. Who's going to join me on this adventure? I have to tell you one day, I have this little necklace on which nobody can really see. Oh, can't really see, but yeah. It says, it says on there, <laughs> you believe she could, and then you turn it, so she did. So and that's she sort did. of the story of Prime Time for Women. <laughs> okay, so you started that in 2019. Um, and well, the, the team planning was 2018. And right, the research was well before that. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, which is when you discovered the need for social connectivity and healthy aging. Um, but the show, the TV show. Yeah. What, started so was, 20, TV February, show, 2019. was that really kind of the first, um, you know, coming out, going, you know, being, being recognized as an organization? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I had done, of course, several press releases. Um, we had um, Stacy Purcell, uh, uh, who it was the founder of the Veterans Portrait Project, and she was had re uh, a year or so before had done this project on female veterans at the Veterans Administration in D.C. This whole portrait, and um, I wrote her a letter 
And I told her about what I was doing and her uh, agent answered and said, okay, here are my speaking fees. And I wrote back, oh, thanks so much. But we don't have any money. <laughs> right. And they wrote back and said, that's all right. We're coming anyhow. We want right. to be a part of this. Um, and, you know, it, it was one of those things when we brought in somebody who was known just not nationally, but internationally, it created a buzz and it gave us a little bit of legitimacy um, to say that we were here to uplift women with other women. We're not doing this alone. Honestly, none of us are going to do anything alone. Everything we do is connected to somebody else, to everybody else, really. And so I'm not even sure if Stacy realizes what a role she played in the success of our organization, but it's certainly, um, you know, things like that. I, I, I would say there's been a couple other ones like that, and I don't know if I'll get to tell you about our Grandma Gatewood hike, but that was another one where sometimes you do something for the right reason, and then you you get you receive way more benefits than you ever thought. Well, you have opened the door to that. So, and I can, you know, I can relate too because I've had people where I've asked to be on my show, and they're like, "Well, here's our speaking fee." I'm like, "Yeah, okay. Well, we're not doing that." And they're they come on anyway. So, yeah, yeah people like to tell their stories and share their stories and inspire other people. So one of the one of our slogans is. Um, Every woman deserves to be seen and heard. And one of the really fun uh, to me, um, it's probably one of the hardest things I do because it, engage, it involves a blog. But I've been writing two different blogs. Last year, I did a blog called A Year of Hikes, 52 Weeks, 52 Women, Same Trail. And um, I was no longer doing this show where I was connecting with big groups of women. But I got to hike with one woman for several hours. Some of them were slow hikers and others were speedy. <laughs> so anywhere between one lady, it was an hour and 47 minutes. We did four miles on the AT and it was not, it's not an easy hike. And wow. another lady it was four hours and 10 minutes. So it just, <laughs> just depends on, but the whole idea was to meet these women where they were to note the change in the environment on the trail, the floor, the fauna, the way the sun uh, was in the sky, the, the angle of the sun, and also how I saw myself being reflected in the guests that I was um, hiking with, and to have the opportunity to hear their story and then share their story. And I think the biggest gift of that whole thing is I wrote a blog, 52 blogs in 52 weeks. It was a, it was like a discipline for me and it was a great thing to do during COVID. But the best part of it, Wendy, was I would read these blogs to the women before I posted them. And so many of the women cried and they oh. would say things like, one woman said, now I want to meet me. <laughs> and another woman said, I didn't know I was so interesting. <laughs> And, you know, it was that kind of stuff where, oh, one lady said, um, I wish I could talk about myself the way you talked about me. Aww. And I honestly, I said, I didn't say anything that you didn't tell me. I just reflected it back minus all the negative self um, loathing that we do. Right, right. And, and you know what? That story, Bernadette, of your 52 hikes has inspired me that now I'm doing walkabouts. I think I told you about that with people, not just locally, but also long distance. Like we'll talk on the phone while they're walking one trail. I'm talking and I'm walking another trail. Yeah. It's a wonderful idea. I love that for social connection. And, and this year I'm doing something totally different. Um, I, I am a bit of a foodie or whatever. Um, I love to cook. And so I'm doing this. Um, I had read a number of articles. I'm always looking for research that talks about power of connections. So people can read lots of articles about how uh, food brings people together over, um, you know, shared celebrations, religious ho uh, holiday, birthdays, anniversaries, but also how they connect just families on a uh, regular basis. Like one of the rules we had when my kids were growing up was we ate dinner at our table. And when our boys were teenagers, they hated it, especially like when they were 17, 15 and 13 and they had, you know, you know, lots to do. 11, 10 year old sisters. And they're like, God, we're going to sit here with dead girls. But um, <laughs> yes, you do. But um, I've been doing this um, part of Prime Time for Women's mission is to celebrate, connect, and empower women from diverse backgrounds as they explore new possibilities in the second half of life with the goal of improving their health. So, um, this idea of diverse backgrounds how do we come together? How do we connect? 
If you're not willing to sit with somebody and hear their story, then you're never going to have understanding. And if you don't have understanding, you're not going to have empathy. And if you don't have empathy, you're not going to have that connection mm-hmm. that really makes a difference. And so um, I've been doing a blog called A Yummy Year, Cultures, Cooking, and Connections. A yummy year. And um, this past, uh, I just posted a blog yesterday. I cooked with a woman who was 82 uh, and her granddaughter. Uh, she's from Italy. She uh, grew up in San Valentino, Aruba, and uh, moved here when she was 18. And just the story of her life, um, living through the war in uh, Italy at the time, coming here, creating a new life, then creating another new, she's really a prime time for women, woman, she, uh, her name is, um, let's see, I'm just blanking on her name, Francesca Maggio Calda. Um, but she has created, she's like Wendy, when you say what's next, that's what this lady does. She was so inspiring. But we made the world's best biscotti. I heard all these great stories. And when I left, she gave me a pound of biscotti. So it was a so win win. So you're doing these in person. You're actually. Yes. Doing, wow. Yes. Well, yes. that's a nice pivot from the social isolation of, of the pandemic. Right. And some of the times the women come to my house uh, this month, I went to their kitchen. Uh, next month, I am cooking, uh, driving two and a half hours to cook with a woman who's from Ukraine. Wow. Uh, and we are going to cook outside on a cast iron pot on a tripod. Um, How cool. So it's, you know, it'll be a chance to learn about her native country, also mm. hear her thoughts on what's going on there politically right now, Absolutely. how that's impacting her, what she has to say about that. And at the same time, give me a sense of um, real understanding and maybe even more compassion for what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned Grandma Gatewood. I want to hear more about that. I just love the name anyway, but <laughs> so tell us about that. So uh, her, her name was Emma Gatewood and Emma Gatewood uh, raised 11 children and um, she was in a, an incredibly abusive, physically abusive, emotionally abusive marriage, but she didn't feel she could leave because she had all these kids at different times. She would take little breaks, but where she really found peace and solace and opportunities to heal was out in nature. And so she eventually did leave her husband. And when she was 67 years old, she, she had been at a doctor's appointment and she had read about the first man that hiked the Appalachian Trail. This was back in 1957. And she said, hmm, I could, maybe I could be the first woman to do that. So she didn't even tell her children. She didn't have a backpack. She made a drawstring bag. She wore kids' tennis shoes. And she had a shower curtain that she used as a, um, a mat to sleep on so she wouldn't get wet. Very, she was a forager. She spent a lot of time in the woods. She was very knowledgeable about plants. She grew up in Appalachia. She said, I can do this. This is not an issue. That, you know, people said she didn't tell anybody because she didn't want people to tell her she couldn't do it. So she goes off, doesn't even tell her kids, doesn't even tell goes her. off and starts hiking the AT. And she runs into, I'm not going to tell you too much because there's a great book about it, but she fails. So people said, you shouldn't have done that. The rangers came, got her and said, you need to go home. She went home. She broke her glasses was what she couldn't see without her glasses. Oh, yeah. But she went back and did it. And she did the whole thing at age 67. And then this is the best part, Wendy. She hiked the entire AT over 2000 miles, three different times. In addition, wow. in addition to the first time, the last time at age 75. And, you know, to me, she didn't let people tell her, you're too old. She said, nobody's telling me how to live my life. She had a passion. She followed her dream. She came to understand that this was good for her physically, emotionally, healthy. She sta- she, if you read the book, you find out that she gets off the trail and stays with total strangers and makes these friends with these people. I mean, I just really love it. And there's one little section of the book that I'll just tell you because it happened right here in Washington County, Maryland. Um, she was hiking in the, and she, she really at this time didn't want any publicity because she didn't know if she could do it or not. Mm-hmm. And people heard about it and a reporter came and found her on the trail huh. and she punched him in the nose because she wanted <laughs> to get away. And, uh, you know, she was feisty and, um, you know, later though, she was such a huge hit. She was on the Groucho Mark show. And what I was going to tell you, I think is really validating for prime time for women is 
we've done two different Grandma Gatewood hikes um, two years in a row, uh, commemorating her example, her vision, her willingness to be in her prime and own it and not be dictated to, two years in a row now. And after our second year, a guy named Ben, Mon ben Montgomery, who wrote Grandma Gatewood's Walk, attended our um, online ceremony because um, that's how we were doing it this year. And he asked Prime Time for Women to be a partner in creating a scholarship for women in their prime who wanted to go back to school. <sighs> and I, it just, it, he, he wrote the book about her and it turns out he's a very distant relative, but he was moved by her. And then he said he was moved by Prime Time for Women's um, celebration of her life and asked if we would partner with him. So, that's to exciting. That we could benefit other women and give them a chance to go back to school and to pursue their dreams it just feels really validating. That's very exciting. And so the book is called Grandma Gatewood's Walk. Yes. And for those of us that that don't live in Maryland, um, first of all, when is your next walk? And is there so any Grandma way Gatewood's we can participate? Yes. And we did do this year. We had a virtual option. So um, I will share that with you when we get there. Uh, Grandma Gatewood's birthday is October 25th. Okay. And um, so the first year we just did a tough hike. And I told you, I'm always soliciting feedback. It's not my organization. It's our organization. And some of the feedback is you're crazy. That's too tough. <laughs> it's leaving us out. Not everybody can do that. What's wrong with you? Uh, so Next year, we did three hikes. We did a gentle hike, an intermediate hike, and we repeated our, our advanced hike is what we called it. Um, all different sections of the AT. And the idea um, was to continue to celebrate the steps that she walked that we might literally follow in her footsteps mm. and then figuratively follow in her footsteps. Um, so, uh, but this year, we had virtual hikes. We had uh, somebody in South Carolina, somebody in visiting the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And it's just really fun to see them uh, sign up for this hike, pay, pay the fee, knowing that it's going to benefit other women. And I will tell you, uh, when we do a fundraiser like Grandma Gatewood's hike, we always pick every project we've ever done. We've always picked another nonprofit because as women, we understand that the connection matters. So we seek to highlight and em uh, emphasize what other women are already doing. We don't have to be the only ones to do it. We can share your good idea. And so in our community, there's an organization called CASA, which stands for Citizens Assisting and Sheltering the Abused. During the pandemic, there was a 70% increase nationally in domestic abuse. Yeah. So we did the Grandma Gatewood hike and we donated a portion of the proceeds to that community, to that organization to serve the women in their care. And, and so, then I guess you're also then using some of it for that scholarship that you mentioned. Well, we haven't that. Oh, that's uh, new. Yeah, that's brand new. We have. I mean, Ben oh. just joined our thing after we were we had already donated the money to this, and he says, "I want to be part of this yeah. thing." That's so very exciting. Yeah, it was just very exciting, and yeah. it it, um, it felt like uh, Grandma Gatewood was also a victim of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. It was really easy to pick them. Perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah, we, we have a, an event coming up here on June 30th, which would be more of a local event. Uh, Menopause the Musical is coming to our community. And so we've rented private space in the local restaurant. We're going to do cocktails and appetizers. Then we're going across the street to the theater. Even though this has nothing to do with, an, or because it's uh, charging people money, we want to know that we're benefiting other women. So a portion of those proceeds are going to go to our women's clubs um, program for housing women in transition coming out of addiction or abuse or out of poverty. And so we're always looking to say women in their prime, we have a lot to offer. We can make a difference. See, and you are such a social connector and a, a, a social entrepreneur, let's say. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. But we started talking about the importance, the science, the research that you did about the importance of social connections. So would you share some of that with us? Sure. So um, I was going to tell you, there is an article written by Christopher Bergman. Uh, it's called The Neurochemicals of Happiness. Oh. And it turns out when people engage in activities that are participatory, reciprocal, informative, 
and create what they call social cohesion or the sense of belonging to a group. Mm -hmm. There are seven different neurochemicals that they can measure in the brain. I mean, science is great. And, you know, my kids think I'm a nerd, but um, I think it's exciting. <laughs> they can measure an increase in the dopamine, the serotonin, the oxytocin. These chemicals come together and create like this, I'm going to call it a cocktail of neurochemicals. And they bathe your nurse, nervous system. They decrease inflammation, which reduces your risk for diabetes and heart disease. Also for arthritis. They improve your memory because there's an emotional connection. And there's been a ton of research. Like you've probably heard people say things like, um, oh, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to remember what you said. They're going to remember how you felt, how they felt when you how said it. Felt. Uh -huh. And this idea of an emotional connection, what that does is it creates a mental picture when there's an emotional uh, peak. And it's like a post-it note that says, remember this. And when you remember that, you can actually bring those neurochemicals back into place. It's an, and it can be a continuous source of joy. And one of the things that's been very um, interesting to me, I've been talking about social connections long before COVID. And I did a lot of public speaking before COVID and people go, hmm, that's interesting, that's interesting. <laughs> now, when people talk about isolation being bad for you, everybody gets it. Everybody. Isolation is, it uh, impacts uh, longevity. It negatively impacts longevity. It increases inflammation. Uh, mental health issues have significantly increased in our country, not just our country, in our world. Yes. And so when we say that there's an antidote to that, and the antidote is positive social connections. One of my favorite articles, um, and this is kind of funny because I embarrass my kids to no end because I talk with everybody. Oh, God. Um, but like we were traveling and I sat down on an airplane and they apparently had all taken um, bets about how long I would it would take me to talk to the person. <laughs> 30 seconds, you know, whatever. Um, but it turns out in this one article I read, um, even chatting with a checkout clerk at the food store increases your dopamine, serotonin and oxytocin. Just taking the time to make that eye contact to excite those what are called mirror neurons. Um, it's what makes babies smile. Babies don't know about smiling, but when you smile at them, their brains go, oh, oh, that's a good thing. And then they smile. It's the same thing with adults, except we don't give ourselves the opportunity to do it because we think, oh, we'll look weird. No, take your time, smile at them, chat with them, do it. Yeah, and I think that was one of the hardest things about the pandemic is that we all had masks on, so you couldn't see. You know, like you could tell some people were smiling, you could see it in their eyes, but... Well, I have wrinkles, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but yeah, and that social isolation. So what about, talk about, you know, if I'm an introvert or I'm an extrovert or, you know, or uh, how do I go out and make friends if I'm new in a community? How does that how do you have some suggestions around that? Well, first of all, I want to say um, introverts uh, can be just as social. Uh, I'm married to an introvert who has the incredible ability of uh, being social. But when he's doing it, he's expending energy. He'll go to a party with me and he's Mr. Social and he comes home and he's absolutely exhausted. I'm an extrovert. I know you're not surprised, but I'm an extrovert. <laughs> And when I come home from that same darn party, I'm like jazzed. Like I can't go to sleep because I'm not <laughs> excited. But so I, I want to reassure extra introverts that you don't might not have the same need, but you do have the same abilities. And it might be worth to cultivate those abilities, even if it's not in a large group of people, even if it's just one on one. I would say to you that um, you have the ability. You, as human beings, we are meant to be social creatures. It's mm -hmm. sort of like there's herd animals and then there's, you know, a people and we're not necessarily herd animals, but we are designed neurologically, physically, emotionally, spiritually to be in relationship. So I would say uh, to your question, how can you find that? I would say join a book club and, and all the programs that we've done we have looked at the research behind it. So I would say, join a book club. We have women who come to our book club who do not read the books, but they come because they want the connection. Really? We have women who read the books, but don't talk a lot at the book club meetings. We don't care, you know, <laughs> if it's meeting a need for them. Um, that's beautiful. 
Um, but I was going to say, we also, we did, I think we mentioned the Prima Donna Dancers, which was a hip hop dance group for women over 50. It was crazy. <laughs> very fun and very funny. Um, we had um, the, the hiking adventures. We, we've done cooking shows. During the pandemic, we did um, several different programs. We did Move to Improve with a local, uh, a, uh, she's a female um, uh, entrepreneur and owner of Powerhouse Studios. Her name's Tina Fraley. She did six weeks of a program called Move to Improve. Um, and they were short little uh, talks on mindset and um, mental well-being as impacted by exercise. And then she led a half hour exercise program that you could do right in your home. Uh, we uh, Women, wine and financial freedom. We paired female venters and winemakers and uh, winery owners with financial experts. And we opened it up to see who would come. The idea was we all need to learn about finances, but we might as well learn something about wine, <laughs> and wine at the same time because that fosters the social connection. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah. So, so you know, creative, Bernadette. You're so like creative. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. We had a, a, a physician on and um, she said, oh, yeah, it's OK to drink a glass of wine a day. And she said four ounces of red wine. And I'm like, OK, so women wine. And I, I didn't feel bad about promoting women wine and financial freedom. And then just recently, this is trouble with reading articles. Um, <laughs> there was a, some new research that said it's not wine that is the health benefit. They drill down into that it's what happens when you drink the wine it's the talking it's the connecting it's letting down your guard it's the emotional uh revelations that take place so anyhow i just thought i i, I i'm gonna have to go back and talk to that physician and see if she agrees <laughs> but it all comes back to the social connection which is exactly. really what you're all about yeah. yeah do you ever let men come into any of your so, so uh it's funny um i am now partnering with our local hospital. We have uh, nine partners, Emeritus Health, uh, our Commission on Aging, the local YMCA, um, Hub Labels, um, Kinesthetic Solutions. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Is, oh, Nova Nordis, which is an international pharmaceutical company. All these companies are coming together to support what we're called walking to wellness. And it is 22 weeks of meeting in a beautiful park here. There's a short presentation by a different speaker each week, and then they lead a mile walk. And the idea is what, when you get there, you uh, hear, you learn something, you know, we go back to the participate, reciprocal, informative, and create a sense of belonging. So after you walk five weeks, you get a water bottle with the walking to wellness logo. After you walk 10 weeks, you're going to get a little sun hat. You know, <laughs> there's these external signs of community of belonging because we want people to know that they're part of our group. And so, um, you know, some of the people that have done that are men. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I did have one of the, the, he is the chief medical officer at the hospital on one of my show. And I remember when I introduced him, he said, I feel so excited. I'm the first man to ever be on prime time. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I would say, Wendy, that all the science that I am talking about applies equally to men. Uh, they need the same sort of benefits. And I think the nicest, one of the nicest things about really studying this is five years ago when my husband turned 60, I gave him a surprise party. And he stood up and he said in front of all these people, I've watched my wife connect. I see what it does for her. I will be a better friend from here on out. And oh, he wow. is a really good friend now. He makes an effort. He makes, he nurtures those connections, which he took for granted for a lot of years. Well, and you're busy, you're working. And I mean, I think, and it does take effort. It does. It does. Yeah. So what is one of the things that about all that you've done, which is a huge list of things, what is one of the things you're most proud of, Bernadette? Hmm. Or two? Well, you know, I, I would say that I feel like I've done this as a way to honor my mom. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of nine children. And my mom, uh, before I ever thought of the term prime time for woman, my mom was saying, what's next? She reinvented herself a bunch of times. And um, I marveled at her strength and her um, creative energy. And so I feel proud 
uh, every once in a while, I have to have a little chit chat with myself and say, don't let your ego get involved because this isn't about you. This is about all women and in particular a way to honor your mom. And so the, the money that I got from my mom, I invested it all into uh, prime time for women. Um, and I feel really good about that. I, 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 I passed on her legacy. Yeah. Um, and I, I can remember my husband being so supportive of that because he could have said, no, wait, that, that's for us. That's not for other people. But he didn't. He was like right in there with me. And um, um, I feel really good about that. That's beautiful. Well, I mean, that's so much of who you are is to give back to help people to help your community. I want to, um, as I'm going to ask you the last question, I want to share with people how to find you. Okay. Um, so Bernadette has a website. They are a nonprofit, by the way, which I don't think we mentioned. Um, no, and I would say if people want to support our mission in, you know, we would love for you to consider joining us in our effort and or maybe in October, join us for the Grandma Gatewood hike, either in person or virtually. Or if you want a speaker to your organization, that's something that I I, I just love. Well, you probably figured that out. I love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you also mentioned that people may want to start a prime time for women group where they are. Right. So if there would be an interest in mm -hmm. starting um, a local, uh, you know, what's the right word? I'm just blanking on the word. Organization but, group, whatever. Well, a subset of Prime Time for Women's National. Subsidiary. So that you don't have to go through all the uh, nonprofit stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I, I have to say, that, that, that I should say that's what I'm proud of, just jumping through all those hoops. <laughs> yeah, I know, which is why mine is not. But yeah. it's, but anyway, it's primetimeforwomen.org, um, all spelled out. And Bernadette's email address is exactly as it sounds, BernadetteWagner01 at gmail.com. And I'm going to leave that up while I ask you the final question, okay. which is that Hey Boomer, you know, is designed for men and women that are asking what's next and how do we stay relevant, involved, meaningful in this next chapter of our lives? You've given us a lot, but... Are there one or two takeaways you'd like to leave with the audience that you think are the most important? I would say do it your way. Um, we're all different. We have different interests. I would say figure out what your interest is and see if you can use that pers in, while pursuing that interest. Can you benefit somebody else? Because another little scientific fact is that when you feel, feel purposeful, you are help more. You have a greater uh, opportunity for uh, improved health. The other thing that I would say is that, uh, according to recent um, research, social connections have a greater impact on physical health and emotional well-being than diet and exercise combined. So everybody talks about I'm going to eat this food, or I'm going to do this amount of exercise. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying do that, but make sure you don't miss the secret ingredient, which is the social connection. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do for the community up in Washington County. And um, yeah, you inspire me to do more here well, in Greenville, it's, South it's, Carolina. It's been so pleasurable to meet you. And I told my husband, you're like my avatar. I was like, <laughs> Cool. Um, Wendy, thank you so much for having me and for the work that you're doing. I did want to share one little weird thing. Um, I'm a TI swimmer and you had Barry Shore on one of your programs. And I I had just come back from a TI, another, my second TI swimming class. And he starts talking about total immersion swimming. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to reach out to him just to say I'm right there with you. Yeah, Barry, he he is the most enthusiastic person. It was you so may funny. even have trouble getting a word in with Barry. <laughs> we we have to duel it out for sure. You would, you would. Well, thank you so much, Wendy, for having me. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And I just uh, you've had some wonderful comments that um, if you want to go back and look at them, uh, people love love what you're doing. They love your message. Great. Um, so next Monday's Memorial Day. Um, happy Memorial Day to everybody. And we are not doing a show for Memorial Day. Um, but June 
is going to be all about reinvention. So looking for the answer to what's next. And my first guest in June is a man named Paul Long. Are you familiar with Paul? I don't know Paul. Okay. Well, he's the founder of A New Way Forward. He's the third generation news reporter. And as a storyteller and a journalist, New Way Forward has given him the fulfillment of making an impact by sharing information, ideas, methods, and insights to help people realize their best life. He has a podcast, and he's talking with guests about a different way of looking at getting older. So we're going to talk about re how he reinvented himself and how he defines getting older. So that should be fun. For sure. Yeah, it should be fun. Um, if you want to support some of the work that uh, Bernadette is doing, as we said, you can find her on um, primetimeforwomen.org. If you want to support Hey Boomer, you can find us at heyboomer.biz. Um, also, please go uh, share us with your friends. Go to the podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcast, review, rate, you know, let everybody know how much you love what we're doing and the messages that we're bringing out and support our sponsor, roadscholar.org slash heyboomer. Just go and look at their trips. It's going to whet your appetite. You're going to love it. So I like to remind everybody before we end that live with passion, live with relevance, live with courage, and you are never too old to set another goal or dream a new dream. My name is Wendy Green, and this has been 